what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so this will be the spoiler free review for netflix's upcoming series wednesday i think it comes out next week on the 23rd uh the day before thanksgiving happy thanksgiving to everybody out there i know it's early but happy thanksgiving still so wednesday comes out next week i've seen all eight episodes this show is phenomenal i, I will just say that just to start it off it's phenomenal i want to go over the cast and the brief synopsis first before i get into the rest but it says here, while attending Nevermore Academy, Wednesday Adams attempts to master her emerging psychic ability, thwart a killing spree, and solve the mystery that embroiled her parents 25 years ago. Now, this cast, here we have a very talented cast that came together to work on this project. You have, of course, Jenna Ortega in the titular role of Wednesday Adams, Christina Ricci, who many people know is also Wednesday from those two Adams Family movies from the 90s, I believe is when they came out. Louis Guzman is in the role as Gomez Adams, Catherine Zeta-Jones as Morticia, Isaac Ordon... Or Donis as Pugsley, you know that's Wednesday's brother. We have some other individuals here. Gwendolyn Christie as Laris Larissa Weems, who I know I've seen so many people on Twitter actually going crazy about her participation. Emma Myers, who we know plays Enid, um, and some other individuals that I won't really touch in touch on or name right now. I want to start off just talking about this show because, again, I think it's phenomenal. The show wastes no time setting the stage and establishing that Wednesday is an outcast, which I love. Wednesday is kicked out of school after retaliating on some bullies because she believes that she's the only one that should be bullying her brother Pugsley and tormenting him. And she's sent to Nevermore Academy as a result. So Larissa Weems, an old friend of Morticia, can keep an eye on Wednesday. So she initially plans to escape, but a mystery related to her parents leads to her staying and some other things she'd never own up to like being having a love interest as the show progresses plus there's this awful cgi monster you meet in the very first episode that sparks her intrigue and leads to her staying and she needs to find out stuff related to her psychic abilities uh because it's helping her solve this mystery now jenna ortega is simply a scene stiller in this role she's detached she lacks emotion and retains the signature twisted sense of humor one might expect from wednesday adams and of course the only thing that seems to make her smile is the thought of death or anything um grotesque or macabre in that nature the monotone delivery the facial expressions her mannerisms will immediately just have you intrigued to see her bring this character to life even further i'm not even going to waste time praising some of the visual aesthetics you see very early on because this show is gorgeous to look at i have for, i actually forgot that tim burton was associated with the project but the aesthetic was enough to remind me you have the color contrast the set pieces the slightly exaggerated reality and specifically how wednesday constantly stands out in every scene she's in specifically in these first three episodes uh, it was enough to just recognize the genius of tim burton or what i think he's earned the title of i think they call it burton-esque so there's also this harry potter feel to the show as well that should satisfy any potter heads listening to this review wednesday even has her own draco malfoy in the form of bianca who is the queen bee of nevermore tension can always be felt when these two share a scene together and it's only added or amplified by the fact that the two stars playing both wednesday of course we know that's ortega and the actress playing bianca they are so talented in what they're doing and these two actually have a fencing sequence where they're fencing each other, obviously. And the choreograph choreography during this is amazing to see. Now, there's actually fencing a few other times during this show. And I think those are some of the best action sequences that they have to offer anytime there's fencing going on or even wednesday herself who has a few who has a few brawls the choreography is always so good um can't praise it enough just to touch on something else in regards to the mystery at nevermore if you struggle to find it compelling compelling early on hopefully there are aspects of it that you can grow invested in the way i did overall the mystery just never really sucked me in the way i wish it could have and that isn't to say that it's poorly written it just takes a while to garner my intrigue wednesday's connection being the most intriguing aspect of it of course off the rip but her pursuit of this monster is underwhelming to me partly because the monster's first appearance is a horrible cgi job that was complete turnoff to me thus making it something i didn't want to see more of i wanted to see less of outside of the hot and cold mystery though wednesday mostly won me over with its exploration of its titular character the supernatural edge it has and the struggles facing our supporting lineup of likable engaging students at nevermore academy the Tim Burton directed episodes definitely were among my favorites, and I will say that the ending of episode three, I found that to be simply beautiful. You'll see why. Enid, who I know many people want to hear me talk about, is Wednesday's roommate at Nevermore. She's a very likable character who is so full of life. She's energetic and every other common folk feature you, you will not find in Wednesday. Emma Myers' enthusiastic performance brings the character to life in the best way possible. 
as mentioned the exploration of wednesday in this show is amazing watching wednesday adam struggle with her emotions have a crush is a delight because of ortega's talent she even has a scene where she's holding back her tears and many other moments where she's holding back these emotions uh but specifically this instance where she's holding back tears during a tense moment with a character named xavier the characters around her seem to be slowly pushing her to conform or at least show some emotion even though she's used to being so unconventional but you can see that she wants that she wants to feel and might be jealous of everyone around her slightly that's what i was getting from it anyway as mentioned the mystery takes a while before it really gets interesting and i say but by episode so five i was starting to be more engaged with that and how it relates to wednesday's arc and her identity struggles as she learns more about her family pacing is a strong suit for the series especially during the narration sequences to help explain aspects of the story the set designs the costume designs the score all of this stuff is so wonderfully crafted and utilized in this show i think that the show kind of is just head and to head to toe one of the best shows i've seen this year it might actually be my favorite show i've watched this year out of new shows i've watched this year this was unexpectedly not something i anticipated to end up like this but it did wednesday is a show i want to see a second season to and i hope jen ortega with her busy schedule because you know if you're a screen fan you listen to this video that she has that stuff going on with tara carpenter playing that role hopefully she can find a way to fulfill both if they get a second season of wednesday going because i want to see more of this show i do think that there are going to be obviously things that people do not like you might feel like some characters are underutilized and others i will say that the way they use christine Ricci in the show uh or christina Ricci, i think that she's utilized quite well for anyone who is nostalgic about her involvement they use her fine um wonderful set design again wonderful visual aesthetics great cinematography great performances great pacing uh the mystery it again is hot and cold some of the writing there's probably too many fake out moments with who they give you as like is this the monster is that the monster or what is the monster maybe you'll feel like it's weighing on you in terms of being a fake out by the time you get to the end because there's so many moments where you're like ah that's a red herring that's red herring okay that's one too many that's just what i was getting <laughs> i love the show i want to see more of it i can't wait for you guys to see it and let me know what you think about it down in the comment section below uh, there are moments of again suspense and tension when it's needed but it's mostly a, a perfect blend of comedy and horror uh that i think many of you that are fans of the adams family or just fans of horror comedy in general you will get a kick out of this show and you hopefully will love it as much as i did if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notifications and there's a video in the description I will have links on my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.